spring and maybe even summer-like conditions are about to take hold as a major warm-up is coming to the U.S., and that also means severe storms will be triggered in the central and midwestern parts of the country. In this video, I've got the details on a potential storm outbreak early to mid next week and additional weather forecast information you don't want to miss. One nation weather. As always, many of the maps shown in this video are from WeatherBell. There is a free trial link to that down in the description. As always, check that out. And of course, please hit the subscribe button if you enjoy the rest of this video and you are not already subscribed to the channel so I can deliver more consistent and accurate forecasts right to you. Now let's get right into this, taking a look at the visible satellite that we've had here. This is through our Thursday, April 11th, 2024, as I film this video here in the late evening. We've got some showers and storms that have moved through parts of the East Coast today. They've brought severe weather. We've seen some storms in the Ohio Valley as well, bringing some squallier conditions. Overall, this low pressure system is on the ending trend here as it's going to be pushing on off towards Canada, gradually wrapping up with some gusty winds in a lot of areas along the East Coast over the next few days. Always check weather.gov to see your latest alerts from the National Weather Service and if you're included in a wind advisory or warning. Overall, you can see again using future radar from the European model as we look at our pattern overview. The Great Lakes, Ohio Valley, Mid-Atlantic, parts of the Northeast, not done with rain yet. Still some showers and storms, especially closer to Long Island and the Cape Cod region as we go through Friday. That could lead to some isolated flooding. Overall, though, the storm coming to an end, like I mentioned just a second ago, with just wraparound flow and some lingering showers coming off the lakes there. No snow, just some showers there as we make our way through the end of our Friday going into early Saturday. Now now you can see these red lines popping up over the central United States by the time we head towards Saturday, April 13th, 2024. That is as we've got some ridging developing over the central United States, dry unless you're on the immediate west coast, and some zones in the northeastern United States and mid-Atlantic. We'll be watching some storms late Sunday going into early Monday. Could these be briefly severe with especially gusty winds? Yes, I wouldn't rule out an isolated tornado or some hail out of those storms. Overall, probably sub-severe in most cases. There is those roll through again late Sunday into early Monday. And then that warmer air and that ridging over the central United States, that's what's going to pay off early next week. And unfortunately, a strong way and potentially a violent way as we could see severe weather erupting over especially the central Great Plains here. So if you live from South Dakota, Minnesota, all the way back down there to Texas especially, I think we're going to see a dry line develop. That's where we're going to have warm, moist air meet with cooler, dry air coming out of the Rockies. This is a classic textbook April severe weather setup here as we're going to have a strong low pressure system bringing that front through the central U.S. late Monday, April 15th, going into early Tuesday, April 16th next week. Something that you definitely need to be monitoring even on up there into parts of the Dakotas. Very heavy rain. Some strong winds out of this system over a lot of the, these regions as well, pushing into the Midwest, some storms possible late Tuesday as well. So through parts of Iowa, Missouri, Arkansas, as well as into Wisconsin, Illinois, Western Kentucky, maybe even Western Tennessee, these will be some zones that will probably be watching the closest late Tuesday going into early Wednesday if this model trend keeps up. This is just one model that we're looking at right now. It also looks like we'll continue to see some storms into Wednesday afternoon. We'll see where those could be, but probably over the Great Lakes and the eastern regions, if they're still lingering around. We'll also be watching that snow I just circled over there that will probably still be ongoing and wrapping around this system as it kind of moves over the north central United States and that snow pushes through parts of Idaho, Montana, and maybe Wyoming. Taking a look at the severe weather setup as we head into early next week, this is as we go towards Monday. Late in the evening, we've got a low pressure system and the associated mid to upper level trough. That's what we're looking at here trough just being an area of low pressure system digging down in the jet stream. You can see that there from Arizona moving into the central plains. You can see the front flank of that trough there into parts of Oklahoma, Kansas, late Monday night going into Tuesday during that severe weather time frame, trying to turn a little bit further towards the north. And that's this trying to become a negatively tilted trough, which essentially brings the strongest of severe weather events normally. It does look like this trough will begin to break up a little bit as it heads towards the Mississippi Valley, heading towards Tuesday, towards Wednesday. But I think there will be some ingredients that actually kind of make up for that downfall of this system or the mid to upper level part of this system anyway as we head towards the mid part of next week one of those things being the low level wind field look at this all these reds these maroons whatever you want to call these grayish colors here over the central united states as, as we had late monday going into early tuesday that is winds just above our heads in the central united states moving at 50 to 60 knots a very strong low level jet stream coming out of the south in contrast to those southwesterlies there in the mid to upper levels we were just looking at, as that moves into parts of the Midwest Tuesday and Wednesday, that will also help to elevate the tornado threat. And again, that goes for both Monday, Tuesday, and then into early Wednesday is when the severe weather event is looking certainly possible, if not likely already. Another thing we're looking at, moisture content. You see these yellows, that is juicy, ripe air for severe weather through parts of Texas, Oklahoma, 
Kansas, Western Missouri, Western Arkansas, Western Louisiana late Monday evening. Just because you've got the ingredients doesn't mean you've got storms, but just like we saw a minute ago when playing out the European model, it certainly looks like there will be storms developing along this dry line right here. You see those reds on the left side, the yellows on the right side. That's where you've got very moist air dew points in the 60s, which is very ripe for severe weather. Meeting up with, again, coming out of the Rockies there, a very big cold front. And you can even see the look of that low pressure system and the swirl of it up there over the upper Midwest. Tuesday going into Wednesday, moisture still lingers into parts of the Mississippi and mid and upper Mississippi Valley here as we head really into Tuesday and Tuesday night. Now to track this, we're going to use my One Nation Weather Severe Scale. My personal prediction goes on a zero to seven scale. And what we're looking at here, one, two to three, that's where you're getting into that isolated and maybe scattered severe weather with some potential tornadoes, especially as you get towards a three, then a four, five, six, seven. That's when you're getting on up closer to that outbreak potential again. You can read all of those on screen pause the video if you want to go back right there but taking a look at our scale as we head towards monday if you're in any color on the screen i want you to be weather aware i think once you start getting into those dark greens closer to the yellow the orange on this graphic that's when you're getting closer to the higher probabilities of severe weather that i'm seeing here once you get into especially southern nebraska Kansas, Oklahoma, northern Texas, even going on up there really towards northern Nebraska, parts of Iowa as well. Late Monday, I think that's when we're going to have a textbook severe weather event possible here with all hazards, including potentially strong tornadoes. So again, I've already got a four of seven on my risk scale five days out. So that's certainly something to keep in mind. Once we get towards Tuesday next week, you know, we're getting five and a half, six days out from this. And I've got a three of seven on my scale already here into parts of the Midwest. That includes especially Illinois, southern Wisconsin, Wisconsin, eastern Iowa, and eastern Missouri. And again, I think those low-level winds that I was showing, that really strong southerly flow right close to the surface, com combating those winds moving from the west and the upper levels of the atmosphere, that's going to create that rotation. And therefore, we're going to see a severe weather event probably into the Midwest and upper and mid-Mississippi Valley here as we head towards the Tuesday and early Wednesday time frame of next week. Now, what's helping to fuel severe weather? I want to talk about temperatures now. As we go towards Saturday afternoon, 20, 25, even 30 degrees above normal for this time of the year into the northern plains, even the central Great Plains as well. The same goes for Sunday, even on over there into Montana. Any of these grayish colors, the maroons, that's where we're getting into that 15 to 25 degree anomaly range here for above average temperatures. Now, you can also notice those cooler than average temperatures there into parts of Arizona and Utah while I circle these warmer um, anomalies continuing on off towards the east. That's what's going to help to fuel our severe weather. Now, let's Take a look day by day at the highs and lows of our temperature department. Friday, April 12th, 2024, in the morning. Just want to briefly point this out. We've got record warm lows expected over New York. The eastern shores there in the mid-Atlantic as well, and even in parts of Virginia, we'll see some record warm lows with 50s and even some 60s closer to the coast there, with southerly flow continuing and finishing up as our low pressure wraps up in that region right now. Friday afternoon, April 12th still, we're looking at temperatures in the 60s and 70s over a very broad expanse of the United States, but especially on down there into the southern high plains, closer to obviously Arizona, parts of southern Nevada. That's where we're going to be the warmest with plenty of 80s and even again, you know, there in southern Arizona, some 90s to go around. By the time we head towards our Saturday here in the morning, look at this. Warm for a lot of the country, at least mild for this time of the year, especially if you're down there in Kansas, Oklahoma, and Texas. This is that really warm air and unusual usually warm air, to be honest with you, that's coming into the country here. Saturday or in the morning, you know, we've already got 50s to start the day in a lot of Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Louisiana. By the afternoon, a lot of this region all the way in up there to South Dakota and southwestern Minnesota, not breaking records necessarily, but certainly getting well into the 80s. The only areas staying a little bit cooler on off there into parts of New York, Vermont, New Hampshire, Massachusetts, that's as we go through Saturday. Going into Sunday morning from Texas all the way up here into these zones I'm circling in the Midwest, some 60s to start the day. These are morning low temperatures, so you're not even getting below 60 in many areas like St. Louis, Kansas City, on up towards Chicago, barely getting down into the 50s at night. Broad expanse here that I'm circling, only getting down to those very mild morning lows here on Sunday. <clears throat> here we go towards our Sunday afternoon. Look at this, all the way up here into parts of Seattle, Washington, and areas eastward. Very warm conditions. Look at that eastern Washington getting into the 80s, potentially. Some parts of Montana doing the same. 
Texas, western Oklahoma, into Kansas, we've got 80s to near the 90s, and that could break records there into central Kansas, Topeka, surrounding areas. It's going to be a very warm afternoon here on Sunday in that area, and then, you know, just all across the southeastern and eastern United States as well, excluding the northeast. We're going to get 70s and 80s here Sunday afternoon. It is going to be very warm with record-breaking highs in some communities there in Kansas, again, hitting the 90s. Monday morning, this is our severe weather day. During the morning, you're already starting off with some record warm lows. That's what those circles indicate here into the central plains with 50s and 60s going as far north as South Dakota to start the day. In the afternoon, here's that zone we'll be watching for severe weather, most likely on Monday overall, kind of that overall highlight. Into the 80s, plenty of moisture looking just right for storms. And also down here over the southeastern United States, look at all these mid and upper 80s. The first taste of, you know, early summer-like weather, even if you want to call it that, through Georgia, the Carolinas, into southern Virginia, parts of Florida. And, and you can definitely see that locally warm bubble there that's kind of hugging the southeastern shores Monday afternoon. Heading towards Tuesday, April 16th, warm in a lot of the Midwest. We've got some record warm lows continuing there. Again, find your community on the map, even if I don't mention it. The color code and the key are at the bottom. Plenty of 70s, 80s, and even some 90s closer to the Gulf Coast as we head towards Tuesday, April 16th. And remember, we're seeing that spring moisture return as well, so it is very warm in comparison to average feeling a little bit warmer than what the actual temperature reads as well. The 6 to 10 day temperature outlook, this is 17th through 21st of April. Warmer than average on the East Coast, cooler than average there in the Mountain West by this point, as we're going to continue pro to probably see some systems move into parts of the Great Lakes, and we might even see another severe weather event tailing the one I discussed in this video towards the end of next week, and you can kind of see that indicated there with a lot of precipitation through the central parts of the country. So it's something we're tracking here at One Nation Weather, something you can track right with me by hitting that subscribe button. If you do so, you'll get consistent, accurate, easy to understand videos, and occasionally some live streams delivered to you. That's it for this video. Hope everybody has a blessed rest of your day or night whenever you're watching. One Nation Weather.